Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me here at GTC and thanks for coming to my talk on kindness coin design. I wish I was there with you, uh, but thinking of you all. Uh, so my name is Michelle Clough. I'm a, oops, hang on, and already my slides are broken. My name is Michelle Clough. Uh, I'm a game writer, editor, narrative designer, and partner in the narrative co-op Tailspinners. I've worked on a variety of titles, including some romantic interactive fiction, which is very relevant because I'm really, really into romance, sex appeal, and sexual content in games. I co-founded and chair the IGDA Special Interest Group for Romance and Sexuality, uh, as well as our Discord-based community, which is being relaunched as Ferrum, the Forum for Erotic and Romantic Interactive Media. I've also talked about sex and sex appeal at GDC before, like, a lot. A lot, a lot. In fact, somehow I've talked about it so much, I talked my way into writing a book on the subject. Uh, it's called Passion and Play. It's due out April 14th. You can check it out at the bookstore with a discount for pre-order, but you can also get a preview here because one of the chapters inspired this talk about kindness coins. Many of you have probably heard of them, and even if not, chances are you've encountered them in some of your favorite games. It's an extremely popular design for romantic and sexual content, both in indie and AAA, but it brings a lot of um, baggage. And while kindness coin romances are compelling and emotional and sexy, this can often be due uh, to the writers being awesome in spite of kindness coins, not because of them. Now, many uh, games reject kindness coin design entirely and embrace completely different gameplay and narrative systems to explore love and sex, and that's great. But this talk is about how we can create systems and structures that are like kindness coins, but with more org organic chemistry, nuanced relationship dynamics, and less potential for ick. So this talk is going to cover kindness coins, what they are, why they're bad, why they're sometimes good, Next, we'll discuss the narrative benefits and possibilities of moving away from generic kindness and into character-specific chemistry. Uh, and finally, we'll explore two models that reimagine the old kindness coin approach through that chemistry. One reframes the format to reliably build romantic and sexual tension. The other subverts the format in favor of unpredictability and chance. Now, quick disclaimer, this is not a talk about how to write good romance, sex, or chemistry. There are other great talks on the vault about that, <clears throat> including some of mine, but this talk is more focused on designing narrative systems to tell romantic and sexual stories and to serve as the foundation for what we write. So, with that said, let's start with kindness coins. Kindness coins are a nickname given to a particular narrative system which you tend to see in visual novels and RPGs, in which the player does nice, kind things for an NPC, like giving gifts, which then earns romantic and sexual affection from the NPC as a reward. Hence, kindness coins, the implication that you're earning or paying for love with kindness. So this is a visual of how this dynamic tends to work in games. The player chooses nice or kind actions for the NPC, uh, usually as part of a dialogue tree or choice menu, and these actions are often clearly signaled through UI by hard icons, pop-ups, and so on. Examples of these actions could be compliments, agreement, favors, gifts, loyalty quests, or just spending time together. Every time the player character does one of these, it adds to an internal value for the NPC, and we'll call this value affection. Sometimes it's tracked, sometimes it's a temporary pop-up, and sometimes it's hidden under the hood. From a narrative perspective, this variable measures how much the NPC likes the player, either romantically or sexually. So the NPC's affection keeps increasing until it hits a specific threshold, which then triggers a response that evolves the relationship, either by unlocking more gameplay or more commonly showing a major relationship beat in a cutscene. Uh, things like communicating interest, first kisses, confessions of love, and of course, sex. Then it usually either transitions into a more linear, a traditional story, or the loop will repeat with new thresholds where the player keeps making nice choices and the NPC rewards them with more love or sex. So at this point, you're probably seeing some, well, <clears throat> issues with this system. And I think that uh, slide sums them up uh, pretty well. 
there is a lot to criticize about kindness coins, and most people focus on the larger negative cultural implications about transactional mo uh, relationship models, entitlement to sex, and gender relations, and all worth their own talks. But for this talk, I want to focus on the narrative and writing issues that make it harder for us to write good romance and sex stories. For one, Kindness coins rarely develop or reflect the player character versus the rest of the game. You can roleplay wildly different personas in a game, but kindness coins are often completely disconnected from those. You could be playing a puppy-killing monster or a literal saint, but either way, when you talk to your love interest, it's all, hey babe, I got you a flower, I hope you like it, and none of the rest of that matters. Very often, kindness coins have to be written that way in order to work for whatever personality type the player is playing. So we as writers have to write more mm, generic stuff that can fit any character. Not too good, not too bad, just nice. So that's an issue. Another issue is that kindness coins flatten out your cast of NPCs. So you might have a very varied cast of NPC love interests with different romantic arcs, and that's great but you still end up engaging them all in the same way, and they still all respond positively. Again, it's kind of the vending machine model. They may all dispense uh, different cutscenes and content, but you're still putting the same currency of niceness into them, which drains them of nuance and difference. Kindness coins can deny your NPCs agency over their own desires. This isn't a mutual romance. The player is romancing at the NPC, bombarding them with niceness until the NPC responds positively. They're a passenger in the player's car while they're driving towards a relationship. And yeah, they might be a willing passenger, but you know, they could be driving themselves in that direction. But without a strong sense of the NPC's drive and desires, we kind of don't know why they'd be driving in that direction or want to get with a player other than, oh, they were nice to me. Which brings me to another big issue. Kindness coins conflate platonic feelings with romantic and sexual attraction. If someone of your preferred gender is kind to you, apparently the only natural reaction is to fall madly in love with them and sex them up. If that were true, I would be having torrid affairs with every nice person I've ever met, and I'm already fully booked with work, so I don't have time for that. Kindness is great, but making love and desire the default reaction doesn't reflect what makes those feelings different from just platonic respect. So at best, the writer still has to do the extra work of fleshing that out anyway, and at worst, you have a platonic dynamic stuffed into a romantic or sexual one with no chemistry behind it. And also, to be blunt, this is where kindness coins can trigger bad memories of real-life experiences. Many women have had encounters with guys who weaponize this logic and expect sex for their kindness. People on the ace spectrum or with platonic friends of their preferred gender have also often had bad experiences with this. And that's not to say that kindness coins are to blame for these cultural attitudes, but they can certainly bring them to mind if they're not handled well. And if your players are frustrated with experiencing this stuff in reality, they're not going to want to experience it in your game. Game. So yeah, there are lots of problems with kindness coins. Now let's talk about some of the good things. Because yes, they do actually exist, and by identifying their strengths, we can work towards improving or replacing them with structures that keep those strengths but ditch the weaknesses. So for one thing, it's ridiculously easy to do. The code and logic for this loop is a super basic programming structure anyone can learn. I know, because I did that little twine thing there. It's also uh, very simple and straightforward from a design perspective. It's robust enough for an entire game by itself, but it's also simple enough to add to a larger project. That's why you see it in everything from baby's first visual novel to a full AAA game. And to be fair, this can also make it easy for us to outline and plot out major and minor beats. It's a flexible framework to work out not just the big cutscenes, but the minor interactions along the way, and it can easily be expanded or shrunk as needed. And for your players, kindness coins provide a simple, easily accessible way to engage with the romantic and sexual narratives they like. The story might have twists and challenges and <clears throat> unhappy endings, but the system for experiencing it is dependable and straightforward. Pick the right options, and the relationship story will progress. The options are usually obvious, and if they're not, that's what walkthroughs are for. And many of your players really appreciate that aspect of kindness coins. And that's not because they're lazy, or because they need spoon feeding, or because they're entitled end cells wanting boobs. Many of those players are players of marginalized genders and sexualities who just want simplified safe spaces to enjoy a fantasy. 
many players are busy and stressed and don't want to strain their brain just to kiss their favorite character. They're not there for the transactional element of the relationship. They're there for romantic and sexual stories that they can navigate in an easy, stress-free way. And, you know, look, some people like Dark Souls, some people like Kirby, some people like both, but at different times and contexts. So while we need games that explore love and sex in deep, complex, realistic ways, we also need games that embrace good old simple wish fulfillment. Just, you know, maybe not kindness coin specifically. Okay, so how do we make better wish fulfillment? How do we ditch the coin metaphor, reframe this thing that increases for the NPC? How do we reframe their response? And how do we give players choice beyond bland niceness? Now, let me think. I just, oh, oh yeah, yeah, that'll do it. I posit that one of the best ways to improve this system is to ground the relationship and the storytelling in chemistry and attraction, which I'm defining here as anything that inspires non-platonic interest, be it romantic, sexual, long-term, short-term, whatever. And this approach has many benefits. For one, when I say anything, I mean anything. By defining chemistry in a holistic way, you can have the most profound connection to the most deliciously shallow appreciation of a person imaginable. And sometimes, of course, you'll luck out and get the entire package in one relationship. But sometimes it'll be skewed more to one end or the other, and that's interesting too. Broadening how we view attraction frees us up to tell more kinds of love and sex stories and more ways people can be drawn to one another. Also, when I say it can be anything, I also mean in terms of the player actions and more importantly, gameplay, because chemistry can be baked into every gameplay system, not just dialogue. And that's not to crap on dialogue, love it. But physical and emotional attraction don't just happen when you're talking to someone, they're happening all the time. So there's no reason why NPCs couldn't be attracted to the way your character fights or their look or how they move or how they chop wood pet cats, conquer kingdoms, it, you, you get the idea. If narrative design is considering how systems can tell stories, then for God's sake, let us use these systems to tell romantic and erotic stories. And if you do, it offers more interesting possibilities for player role playing and character development, because now it's not just giving gifts and saying nice things, it's choosing options to define who you are and what your traits are, and those sparking attraction, because the NPC digs those things. For example, if you're romancing an NPC who finds adorkable people irresistible, yeah, you could game the system by saying and doing adorkable things. And that's totally fine because, well, now you're role playing an adorkable person and someone this NPC could be attracted to. Speaking of, this approach gives a lot more room to flesh out and differentiate your romanceable NPCs. Different people are attracted to many, many different things. So instead of blanket bland niceness making every character swoon, you can go into what each NPC wants and what differentiates them. Mind you, this means actually figuring out things like your character's turn-ons, relationship goals, what attracts them, how they act on it. So add that info to your character bios. And a friendly reminder, this includes your ace characters as well, where some or even all of the answers might be nothing. But that's still an answer rather than I got nothing. So you need to think about this. Lastly, it's a lot easier to write romances where the NPC is active versus reactive because the player dynamic is no longer, I will wear them down with favors. It's I'm acting in a way that this person finds attractive. And then the ball is in the NPC's court. They might have this internal feeling that's inspired by player action, but they decide how to act on it in a way that works with who they are. Now, I could talk forever about the systemic and narrative possibilities of chemistry, and I know this because the first draft of this talk had 30 minutes on it, but that talk will have to be next year. This year, let's get back to the kindness coin system and see what it becomes when you swap out the kindness and coins for chemistry. I call it the chemistry card tower. In the chemistry card tower, the player chooses character actions that attract a specific NPC. This causes a value, attraction, to count up. And when it reaches a threshold, it triggers a major relationship beat, usually the NPC acting on their attraction. Now, you might be thinking that it's the exact same thing as kindness coins with the exact same problems, but I'd argue the subtle differences, even in how we as writers frame it in our heads, have huge impact on our writing. 
Even shifting from coins to a card tower is a better metaphor to apply because now it's about building something, not earning something. With card towers, each card builds the tower higher and the tension with it bigger and higher until inevitably the tower ends up falling. With chemistry card towers, the cards are every interaction that piques the NPC's interest. You're building the chemistry and the attraction and the tension higher and higher until your characters fall into each other's arms. Or, you know, they ask each other out for drinks. That also totally works. There's a fantastic example of this in a TTRPG called Starcrossed, which uses this in its core gameplay and story mechanic, albeit with Jenga instead of cards. The players roleplay characters who are mutually attracted but have to resist for some reason. But every time they do something attractive, they have to remove a piece from the tower. When it tumbles, they surrender and act on their desires. It's a great way to conceptualize certain relationship dynamics and can be good inspiration for actually writing dramatic arcs of love and lust. So let's take a look at the new loop to see more of the differences from kindness coins. Firstly, there is a, already a big difference in the nature of the player choices and actions. Rather than generic niceness, they're interesting, varied, and specific to the NPC. They can be super shallow, deeply meaningful, they can be dialogue, they can be gameplay. And of course, if you're romancing a different NPC, those will all be entirely different actions and attractions. They are probably still clearly signposted though, because this model is still aiming for simplicity and uh, liability. Yeah. <laughs> Next, there's the impact of framing this as attraction, not affection. For one, it avoids that conflating platonic warmth with sexy romantic warmth, but it's holistic to allow to that broad range of types of interest. And most importantly, framing it as attraction better connects it to the NPC's specific active desires, not reactive gratitude. As such, the threshold has more weight and meaning. It means the NPC's attraction has built to a point where they have to act because their feelings were too strong to ignore. They choose to act because they embrace their feelings, or they're compelled to act because they've just been overwhelmed by their feelings. Uh, in terms of a hypothetical example, let's look at how this could work in a game like Dragon Age 2. In the actual game, the dialogue system lets you shape Hawk's personality outside of romance towards three personality types. If you go one step further, though, those personalities could slot in nicely with certain love interests and what they might be drawn to in a partner. And then their romance scenes take on more context. They visit you that evening because they're moved, amused, or inflamed by who you are, not just when you're with them, but all the time. A model like this uh, can be easily converted to a chemistry card tower that runs in every moment in dialogue choice, not only romance set pieces. So same loop, subtle differences, big impact. Most of the strengths of kindness coins, arguably not the weaknesses. And yes, you are still choosing the right options to get with a digital hottie, but the options are more interesting, the getting with is more organic, and the story has more depth. If kindness coins are about saying and doing the right thing until you're rewarded with love and sex, then Chemistry Card Tower is about being the right kind of person to make the NPC feel that way. And that's what I mean by better wish fulfillment, giving the players a clear, easy path to romantic and sexual arcs they want, but making that path more meaningful and more interesting, both to take and to write. In terms of good places to use the chemistry card tower, one is obviously game genres like RPGs and visual novels that already use kindness coins heavily. There's no need to design entirely new systems and reinvent the wheel. You can iterate on the one that's already there, which makes your producers and the people with money very, very happy. Uh, romantic and sexual narratives with themes of matching, compatibility, and certainty, because part of the appeal is that you know where things are going to end up when you pick that option. And for players that are seeking more idealized experiences and stories, or at least ones that are easy to engage with. Okay, great. What if none of those apply? What if your target player base wants the complication and weirdness and pain of real world sex and romance? What if they want it to be hard? Or maybe you want that. Maybe you're making a game where the tone or themes don't lend themselves to stories where love always wins or where you always know what to do. You may want to tell more realistic stories about confusion, uncertainty, the random chance that love punches your players in the face. Because, you know, let's face it, at least when they start, like, Love and sex can involve uncertainty and luck. Some of it is just the situational luck of meeting the right person at the right time or experiencing a random moment together that you can't plan for. 
And to be honest, in reality, you can't really plan for attraction either. The spark is tough to predict. Even when you have a type, it's no guarantee if you meet that type that you'll actually dig them. Plus, you know, people don't come with walkthroughs in UI. You don't know what's going on in their head. If you're like me, you'd barely know what's going on in your head. None of us know what the hell we're doing. Luck, it's a goddamn miracle anybody ever manages to hook up with anyone. And yet, we risk it anyway. We take the plunge into mysterious waters because the love or booty we're looking for is worth it. And you know what? That all sounds like great fodder for storytelling. And it just so happens we're telling stories in a medium where luck and random chance are baked into the foundation. Hence, the second model, the chemistry casino. As the name suggests, this model incorporates chemistry and attraction, but adds unpredictability through game systems like RNG, through the writing, and through hiding information and feedback. In the chemistry card tower, you know what the NPC finds attractive. You know they'll become attracted. You know they're going to act on it eventually. In chemistry casino, you might not know any of these things for sure because they're hidden from you or because they're genuinely random. Now, this still encourages role playing and exploring attraction, but from a different angle, one that doesn't in offer guarantees. So for example, the NPC's type might not be clearly communicated, meaning you can't just pick an obvious trait that they dig. You have to feel things out in the moment based on what you think you know about them. Are you right? You might never know for sure, but all you can do is try. And also being someone's type doesn't always translate into automatic attraction. It helps and is, makes more likely, but it may not be guaranteed. A good way to look at it, uh, using dice from something other than the casino, is your character's attractive traits in this may be more like modifiers on a dice roll in D&D. Not a seduction roll, but a roll to see if there's a spark there. Uh, if you have a lot of traits they're drawn to, it's more likely, but it still might not turn out that way in the end. And of course, this works in reverse too. You might be the opposite of who they usually like, but boy, for some reason, they're just feeling it with you. So actual randomization in chemistry casino design, so using things like randomized characters, events, RNG, this is great for games with that uh, game design and narrative design already in place. For example, Crusader Kings 3, basically a soap opera generator, thanks to its random characters and events, marriages, adultery, pregnancies, you name it. This makes for great emergent storytelling around love and sex. But... For more traditional game stories, it can be a bit trickier. So for one thing, for players, most do not want to be blocked from romantic and sexual content by one stroke of bad luck, particularly if they've been playing for hundreds of hours. And for writers, let's face it, effective romantic and sexual storytelling can often depend on very non-random things like characterization, pacing, logic. So having random things just happen out of nowhere with no narrative connecting tissue is going to wreck the whole story potentially. If you want randomization and traditional narrative, try a hybrid model. Either have the narrative be modular and easy to shift around, or have the randomization be light and subordinate to the narrative. Uh, a good example of this can be found in Monster Prom, where the goal is to ask a monster out to prom. There is a chemistry system where their attraction is based on whether you have high stats in the traits they like. Uh, but the scenes and challenges where you build those stats and traits are largely randomized every time. So if you end up in the wrong encounters, eh, you might be going stag. So that's one approach to the chemistry casino. The other is to fake randomization, a rigged casino, if you will. And this is where narrative really comes in. Because even if the player can just keep picking the right option and lock in a guaranteed romance, the narrative and other systems can make the relationship feel like luck. And yes, some people will filter it out and post a walkthrough, but you can ensure that those that go in blind still experience that feeling of gambling with their heart or loins. So how do you do that? Well, one of the easiest things to do is to hide everything. More specifically, hide immediate feedback for romance actions. Don't indicate the right choices of what the NPCs think or like or think. Keep players in the dark the way real people are in the dark when they first start dating someone. Let them guess, let them stumble, let them experiment. The uncertainty drives tension and that tension is what you can tap into to power your romantic and sexual tension. Now, the most obvious way to hide things obviously is the UI, making sure that there's no hearts, no pop-ups, no, you know, anything like that. Um, 
but there is also feedback like that to hide and avoid in writing. In many romances, the dialogue gives explicitly clear feedback whether the player's romantic interest is reciprocated or not. But what if your player flirted and instead of that, the NPC just raised an eyebrow, smiled a little bit, and changed the subject? Cue your players going, oh my god, what does it mean? Which, you know, is kind of like real dating feels sometimes. <laughs> So where format and scope allow, lean on things like body language that can be ambiguous and subtle. Other ways to make non-random romance systems feel random, there's the always the old will they won't they dynamic, but writing it in a way that makes they won't feel like an equally likely outcome. You could try approaching it like a sexy romantic whodunit, only in this case the mystery isn't the identity of the killer, but the nature of the feelings involved. And write the eventual connection not as inevitable, even if it secretly is, but as a lucky win or a little miracle. And that can mean themes of motifs of happy chance and sexy coincidence, or it could just mean writing to capture that feeling of jumping out of a plane and finding out that, yes, oh my God, your parachute does in fact work. In other words, taking a chance, making the leap of faith, and it all working out in the end. Remember, love and lust can sometimes be uncertain and confusing and possibly even terrifying, but that makes the successes all the sweeter. To see this in action, I highly recommend checking out uh, the visual novel First Bite because it's a great example of random feeling narrative hiding a non-random chemistry card tower. Uh, it's an erotic gothic horror dating sim about vampires where you impress and attract them and they will have very hot vampire sex with you. And if you fail to impress them, they're going to eat you. It's the dark souls of dating sims, it's tense. And part of what makes it tense is that although there are right choices, you can't really uh, guess what they are and you can't always trust what the vampire's responses are. Are. are they smiling because they like you or because they're toying with you? The danger and tension make the sex hotter and the happy ending feels like you just won the lottery. So friends, writers, narrative designers, I came to bury kindness coins not to praise them. But new things can sprout from that soil or, you know, emerge like a zombie, whatever. These two models are in no way the only options for romantic and erotic narrative design, and there you can probably point out to games that are already using them at least to some degree, but I hope they'll still be useful frameworks for you all. Um, I feel like they're great ways to take this tarnished kindness coin dynamic and reforge it with writing and narrative design into something better. And I also feel like they're great ways to tell different stories about love and desire, whether it's those forces as unstoppable or whether it's just little impossible daily miracles. Both visions can be beautiful and compelling. It just falls on you and your team to decide which works best for your game. So to sum up, go for chemistry, not bland niceness. Give your NPCs agency. Use every game system to tell love and sex stories. Explore the design and narrative differences between randomness and predictable outcomes. Keep creating and supporting gleefully simple shallow wish fulfillment and create and support content with more complicated realistic visions. Design systems to make heart race, write moments that launch a thousand ships and create stories about sex and love that take flight. Thank you very much. If you're interested in the talk, Ferrum, the book, or anything else, I'd love to chat, or you can reach me by email, Twitter DMs, LinkedIn, or friend me on Discord. Check out my book at the store, and have a wonderful and a safe GDC. Thank you very much.